everyone, Anna is here and in this video we're going to go through muscle structure, their roles and the sarcomere units and their structures. And in the next video I'm going to discuss sliding filament theory, but these two videos complement each other, so make sure to watch both of them. The only thing in return I ask, please like my videos, subscribe to my channel and let's get into it. Grab a piece of paper as well, because obviously you'll need to make some notes and some drawings specifically for this topic. So, to start this topic, we're going to discuss the types of muscles. And for A-level, you need to know three separate types. So, we start with smooth muscles, and these contract involuntary. So, what it means, we don't have to think about the contraction. So, that's pretty auto much automatic process. And... Basically, the place we find them is that they cover the internal sides of the organs in the layers. So, for example, it could be inside of the blood vessels, the gut, the small intestine, liver, basically pretty much in most organs. Okay. The second type of the muscles is cardiac muscle. And again, they, it contracts involuntary, meaning that, again, you know, we don't have to you know, think about contracting that muscle. And the cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. And the third and final type of muscle is skeletal muscle. And it, this is the focus of the A-level. And this muscle, it does contract voluntary. So we do need to think about that movement. So for example, if you want to raise your hand, that's the type of the skeletal muscle that ensures that movement. So this is where the muscles are attached to the bones. They're used for the movement. And examples are biceps and triceps, which I will draw on the next page. Sometimes you can be asked to draw the muscles as well or recognize them in a diagram. So it's really important to know what you're looking for. So the smooth muscles, they look kind of like that, almost look like little eyes. Then the cardiac muscles is two lines attached together. And then the skeletal muscle is the striated muscle with many nuclei. So as I said, the focus for A-level is the skeletal muscle, so you don't have to worry about other types, and we're just going to focus on skeletal muscles. So the role of them is to control the movement. So I'm going to use the basically arm as an example, so having a straight arm and an arm uh, bent. So and we're going to do some drawings, so these are hard and not the best, however, just try to do your best. Let's start by drawing two bones, and then followed by the muscles. And the way to imagine it, so if you put your right arm, let's say, on the table, and you um, have your the palm facing upwards, and you kind the bicep is the one that is on the upper side. So if you are like tensing the muscle, then that's the one to think about. And basically in the arm straight, the bicep is relaxed, whereas the tricep contracts. And if we basically now look at the diagram of the arm bending, in the contrary here, the tricep will relax and the bicep will contract, which is kind of interesting in its own right, because that shows to us that these muscles, they have the antagonistic relationship, meaning one relaxes, the other will contract, okay? And you just need to know which way it happens around when it's contracted, when it's straight or bent arm. And the other couple of terms that you need to know is that the muscles attach to the bones via the structures called tendons, and then bones attach to other bones via the structures called ligaments. And that's about it for the role of the skeletal muscles that you need to know. Let's go for the next subheading, number three. And basically now let's start discussing the structure of skeletal muscle. This one causes a lot of confusion, so hopefully I will simplify it for you in a quite a nice way. So basically, um, so let's say the muscle is attached to the bone and it might look something like this. And basically, the muscle tissue consists of many, many muscle fibers. So there are these straight chains that basically kind of align together. And it's really important to understand, and we're going to now look at a specific structure of a single muscle fiber. A micelle fiber, in this case, is a single cell. And I think once you guys get this, this is going to be like really simplified. But this muscle fiber as a cell is weird because it actually has many nuclei within it. So therefore, we call this cell multinuclei or multinucleate. Okay, so although it's a cell 
we basically will have like a membrane as a normal structure, but because it's a muscle cell, it actually has specific terms that are associated with it. So as you can see, the membrane in this case is called saccolemma. The cytoplasm is called a saccoplasm. And if we kind of just look at the side view of the muscle fiber, um, if you draw something like this, and basically we're going to look at the first structure. So in exam, they can ask you to label the structures. So if we're looking at the side view, so the membrane is obviously still saccolemma, but what the saccolemma has it will have T-tubules within that structure. And the T-tubules, they're basically like protrusions into the membrane, which I am um, found difficult to draw, but basically they'll go inward and they will be joining a uh, sacoplasmic reticulum or being close to it. Because sacoplasmic reticulum is an organelle that stores calcium ions within the muscle fiber. Obviously, because for contraction, lots of energy will be required. So there will be loads of mitochondria. And those circular structures that are outside view, they're my my myofibrils. And basically, they consist of um, polymers, biological polymers, called actin and myosin. So quite a lot to remember. But I think if you guys draw it this way, it's probably a simpler way. Or you can always look some animations for this. But basically, the next link to the is that the side of the myofibrils, they consist of the sarcomeres. The next subheading is going to be myofibril and sarcomeres, okay? So you guys need to remember that sarcomere is a unit of a muscle, the one that is kind of undergoing and lays foundations for the contraction. And if you can start basically drawing it like this, but I'm just going to note what the sarcomere is as well, which is obviously important. So sarcomere being a single unit, it basically has two Z lines. And this basically denotes the ends of the sarcomere. And then there will be an M line in the middle. So we know that the myofibril consists of both myosin and actin. So the thick filaments that I'm drawing here, these are myosins. And then the thin filaments I'm going to draw in green are going to be actin. And in the next video, we're going to see how myosin and actin interact. Um, but for this case, we're just going to look at the structure. So let's label this actin as a thin filament and then the myosin as a thick filament. So both are biological polymers. So if you want to look further into it for your extension or for essay extensions, then please have a look. The, 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 they're quite amazing as biological structures. Okay, so it's now important to know that sarcomere consists of different areas. In an exam, it's quite common that they ask you to label those. So the area that has myosin only is called the H band. The area that has actin and myosin together is called A band. And the area that has actin only is called an I band. And basically the principle of contraction is that the actin filaments will slide towards and over the myo myosin filaments. And this what will underlie the contraction, which we'll discuss in the next video. However, it's quite common in exam to start saying, well, what are the changes happening to the sarcomere during the sliding filament theory? Okay, so... The key things to remember that the sarcomere shortens, the A band stays the same, the I band gets shorter, and so does the H band. It gets shorter. And you literally will be asked something like this, and this is the way to remember it. And I think it's, and then in the next video, we're going to see why that's the case. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed my video. Please do let me know what other videos you want me to do now, especially during the exam season. Please drop the comments below if you have any further questions and subscribe to my channel and really recommend it to your friends as well so they can subscribe to it as well. And good luck in your exam season and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.